the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Gillespie's office. Oh, there's Dr. Kildare, Parker. Is he in yet? Is he in yet? Well, I should say he is. Well, we've already had three fights. He called me an ancient flop-eared witch, and I've called him a rambunctious old hog collar. <laughs> I've been fired three times and hired back twice. <laughs> well, that means you're still fired, then. Oh, well, I'm technically unemployed, but he'll hire me back. Well, without me, he couldn't find his way around the office. Dr. Kilder, when I think of all I've done for that man and how ungrateful he is, I can... Okay. Oh. Oh, yes, yeah. Dr. Gillespie, you sneaked up on me. I did, indeed, and I got an earful, too. Ungrateful, am I? Oh, if I was only joking, of course Well, I... you're still fired, and I am not joking. Give me that phone. Hello, Jimmy. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. I, I, uh, I wonder if you'd come up to floor seven, room 706. Something special going on up there? Cooper's been acting up, you know. I guess I'll have to take his bandages off today. Cooper? Uh, oh, all right, Jimmy. I'll be right up. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Diana Verner's in there now, setting up a tray. Uh, refresh my memory, Jimmy, will you please? Uh, how long has Cooper been in here? Uh, two weeks. Oh. We've changed his bandages before, of course, but he's always been under anesthesia. When we take them off today, they'll stay off. Preparing him for the surgery to come, huh? Yeah, uh, good. Are you administering morphine? A half grain. He's strong and in fair physical condition, mm -hmm. considering all he's been through. Burns on his face pretty well healed. Good granulation tissue. Well, what are your observations on his mental attitude? Uh, it's not easy to say, definitely. He's been quiet, hasn't said much, but then they rarely do in these cases, you know. Uh, I suppose his family... Uh... No, no, they're not. He only has a wife, and when I telephoned, the maid said she'd gone to Boston for the weekend and wouldn't be back until this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Well, should we have a look at him? Yeah. Dr. Kildare. Good. He's had a shot. Thanks, Diana. Morning, Dr. Gillespie. Good, uh -huh. Diana. Uh, well, how do you feel today, Mr. Cooper? Like an animal trap. Well, in a way, you're lucky, Mr. Cooper. Really? Yeah, comparatively. You should have seen what people with severe burns had to go through as little as ten years ago. Scissors, Diana. Bandages change every day. Now, just hold still. Mm. Great deal of surface infection and draining and pain. Can you sit up now? Sure. We've come a long way since then. What with sulfonamides and penicillin. <laughs> you kind of got in on the lucky days of science. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll soak it loose. Here's a solution, Doctor. Uh, say, I got... Um, I got it easy, huh? Well, no one with extensive burns has it easy. Yet it's better than it used to be by a thousand percent. Thanks for your kind lecture, Doctor, but it didn't take. Huh. <laughs> you guys are all the same. This will only hurt a little, and then it tears the top of your head off. I'd huh? appreciate it if you were a little more quiet, Mr. Cooper. If I was standing where you are, you were lying in this bed, I could tell you how easy it was and even believe it. <laughs> You'll have to stop moving your head, or I can't be responsible for hurting you. 
Just get it over with, that's all. I'm down to the last layer of gauze. I'll give it a thorough soaking. Nurse. Yes, Doctor. Now, just hold still for a minute and it'll be all over. Go ahead. <laughs> there. You can rest now. Well, I commend you, Mr. Cooper. You did better than most men. Oh, never mind the pep talk. Just turn your head, please. Uh, mm -hmm. Very fine job. Very fine. Mr. Cooper, despite your antagonism, which is excusable from a man who's gone through your difficult medical experience, you should be grateful you've had a doctor of Kildare's competence. Give me a mirror or something so I can get a look at myself. Well, perhaps we should wait till this afternoon when your wife can be here. My wife? That's a laugh. I want to look at myself now. Oh, Mr. Cooper, I, I advise against it at the moment. What's the matter? Am I so gruesome I'd scare myself? Of course not. It's just that burns, well, they do alter the skin surface somewhat, and I'd, I'd rather you tried to adjust yourself to it slowly. Something you're not telling me. Oh, don't put your hands to your face, please. It's my face, isn't it? <sighs> or is it? Are you going to get me a mirror? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bring one up this afternoon when we've contacted your wife. And get me can... a mirror now. Oh, sir, help me. I'll climb out of this bed and find one myself. All right. Diana, can you locate one? I think so, Doctor. Mr. Cooper, uh, did you think your face would be completely unscarred? <laughs> After all, you can't crash land a burning airplane and then lie in the woods for a good many hours without medical attention and expect to come out of it looking like a matinee idol. <laughs> Someone was just telling me all about the great things modern science did, wasn't he? Uh -huh. I want to see for myself. But this is just the beginning. There's a lot of work yet to be done on you. Let me be the judge of that. Here's the mirror, Doctor. Thanks. Let me see it. All right, Mr. Cooper, but I have just one more thing to say. Now, remember, all we've done so far is to heal the wound. We haven't started any repair work at all. Reconstructive surgery can do a great deal for you. Let me see it. Mr. Cooper, please. Did you hear me? Go on, get out, get out, get out. Good morning, Jimmy. Dr. Gillespie. Do you know that in the past two days I've counted more than six new worry lines in your face? If you're not careful, you'll end up by looking like me. You can't help it. I am worried. David Cooper. Yes, he won't mm. talk with anyone, the nurses or myself. Refuses to see any visitors, won't allow the lights to be turned on in his room, and he eats practically nothing. Mm. I spent half the day yesterday with our plastic surgeon, you know, Dr. Sinclair, going over his case. Sinclair assures me that he could restore him almost completely to normal. Well, then go to the boy and tell him just that. He refuses to listen to anybody. Well, then give him a chance to think things over by himself. He'll come around. I wish I thought so. He's in a state of acute melancholia. They say there's a psychological lever that works for each individual case. The trouble is finding it. Do you have any idea? Maybe. Suppose we, uh, suppose we go out to Long Island and see his wife. You know, she hasn't been to the hospital at all. Have you explained the situation to No, her? every time I've called, the maid says she's out. Well, a wife simply isn't out to her husband when he's sick and in trouble. Unless there's a darn good reason. And if Mrs. Cooper's reason is good enough to keep her away from this hospital, I don't think we should go tampering with it. You're absolutely right, Dr. Well, Gillespie. But I've got to treat my patient, and this may be the way to do it. Now, would you care to come? No, 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 sir. The days of sticking my nose in other people's lives are over. All right, Dr. G. I'll see you later. Ah, uh, confound it. Handmade my hat and coat. What is it you want, gentlemen? Mrs. Cooper? Oh, I'm Dr. Kildare, and this is Dr. Gillespie. How do you do? How do you do? Didn't my maid explain to you that I was out? I'm afraid we had to insist. You see, Mrs. Cooper... 
Your husband is in a serious mental state. He was shocked at the condition of his face. He refuses any help. Well, we thought you might be able to talk to him for us. David is quite old enough to take care of himself. <laughs> Illness makes children out of all of us, you know. Sure, you can't ignore your own husband at a time like this. I'm sorry for him. I'm as sorry as I can be that it happened. Hmm. But he did this to himself. Just like everything he's ever done. He does it. I just stand by and watch. And then when he needs me, he starts crying. This time, I'm not answering. But I think you're the only one who can do anything for him. Now, he needs someone to believe in him, to help him over the shock of what's happened. And if you love him, this is not too much for you to do. That's just it, Doctor. I don't love him. I did once, but not anymore. I'll tell you what's bothering David more than anything else in the world. He's lost his good looks. His looks were his life. He traded on them. He made money on them, and he broke hearts with them. Mine included. Maybe this will make a man of him. Oh, it won't make a man of him at all. No, it'll make a wreck of a man. Well, he asked for it. You know who was in that plane with him when he crashed. Mrs. Elaine Dobson, the showgirl widow. Hmm? I suppose he was selling real estate at 12,000 feet? Well, I'm the laughing stock of Long Island. <sighs> Mrs. Cooper, it's not my place to poke into your private marital life. But out of common humanity, couldn't you come down to the hospital and, and do something? No, Dr. Kildare, I could not. Do you mean to say that that is your final word? No, there's something else. I'm leaving for Reno. My lawyers are serving David with divorce papers today. Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes? Oh, I'm glad you got back to the hospital. What's wrong, Diane? It's David Cooper. He just tried to kill himself. Return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Jimmy? Yes? Oh, Dr. Gillespie. I didn't know you were still here. Mm, yeah. You look prettier every day, Diana. Thank you. This is Mr. Cooper's chart. He's mm. resting quite comfortably. Now. Oh, well, just leave it on the desk. I'll look at it later. All right. It wasn't your fault he tried to jump out of the window? That's what I've been telling him for an hour. He doesn't believe me either. Well, I'm going off duty now. Jimmy, if you want to talk or anything later on, I'll be home all evening. Thanks, sweetie. I'll call you. Well, we're lucky that that attendant stopped him. And that Cooper didn't hurt himself. Not this time. You think he'll try it again? Maybe. Unless we can reason with him. He isn't an easy man to reason with. He simply doesn't want to accept life. But somehow I feel that a man who says he doesn't need help needs it the most. Mm. I'm going to give him all I can, whether he'll accept it or not. Does his wife know what's happened? I had Diana phone her house. The maid says she's taking the 9 o'clock plane for Reno tonight. There's huh? no way to get in touch with her before she goes. Well, that ends that. It would seem so, Dr. G. Oh, oh, what was that other woman's name? The one who was in the plane when Cooper crashed. Mean the showgirl widow? Yes. Uh, Elaine Dobson. That's right. Yes. Uh, surely you're not thinking... Oh, yes, I am. Good. I'm going to get her on the phone and bring her up here to talk to Cooper if uh, I can. <laughs> Apparently, she's the woman we should have looked for in the first place. Well, see here, Jimmy. I think you're carrying things too far. A man's private life belongs to himself. Maybe, but from what I've heard, the names of David Cooper and this other woman who was with him were all in the papers. Yeah. I think that makes them rather public property. 
Now, I'm not looking for scandal, Doctor. I'm, I'm looking for the key to this man's heart, so he'll want to live. Maybe it's Elaine Dobson, maybe it isn't. But I'm going to find out. I haven't made a blind date since I was in high school, Dr. Kildare. But I'm glad I made this one. Thank you. Dear David Cooper's doctor. How is he? Not very good right now, I'm afraid. Oh, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. I guess I was lucky. All I got out of that plane crash was sore feet walking around the mountains looking for help. Yes, I read all about that in the newspapers. Uh, you haven't been in to see him at the hospital, have you? No. Should I? He might appreciate a little visit from you. He didn't ask you to call me. What's on your mind, Doctor? Oh, well, Mr. Cooper's burns are very serious. All things considered, he's recovered very well up until a couple of days ago. But when he saw the damage done to his face, he became absolutely unapproachable. Today, he attempted suicide. Oh, no. no. We expected an emotional shock, but this threw us, frankly. If someone he knows and loves could just spend some time with him, I, I know he'd listen to reason. And you read the papers, and you think I might be that someone? Yes, I do. Well? Got a light? Oh, sure. Thanks. <laughs> Doctor, you've got a bum steer. There's nothing between David Cooper and myself. There's only one woman for him, and that's his wife, Jean. Well, I talked to her, and she said No that matter what she said or he said, I know. Look, I saw him a lot. I'm sort of in the real estate business, too. But he was always business with me. And believe me, that means he was all business with every other woman. <laughs> you don't sound like the kind of a person I was supposed to be talking with. You mean I don't sound like the other woman? <laughs> well, I'm not the other woman, and no credit to me. That isn't quite the way I understood it. Oh, I'm in love with him, all right. I'd take that guy in a minute if I could get him, but I can't. Nobody can. She's got him, and she'll always have him. Mrs. Cooper's planning on divorcing him right now. I know, I heard about that. Even at that, she'll still have him. Know what I mean? Yes, I think so. But she doesn't know that. Well, she's always been too busy with bridge clubs and cocktail parties to know he's been around loving her the way he does. Not that he's been a saint, but I tried, Dr. Kildare. And I'm a girl who doesn't miss very often. No, I, I don't think you do, Mrs. Dobson. Well, you were awfully decent to meet me and talk the way you have. I like you, Elaine Dobson. Thanks, Doctor. You're all right yourself. I wish I could help out. I'd give anything to be the one to go in that hospital room and talk to him. But I'm just not your girl. Maybe you can still help, though. Would you be willing to go to Mrs. Cooper and tell her what you've told me? Me? Go to her? That's a switch. Would you? Well, you stuck your neck out, and I'd be sticking my neck out, but if it'd help, yes. Good girl. Hello? Hello? Jimmy? Jimmy? Is that you? Yes, and I think we're getting somewhere. Elaine Dobson's the right one, huh? No, not exactly. I'll explain later. Right now, we've got to get out to the airport and stop Mrs. Cooper from getting on that 9 o'clock plane. Why, it's after 8 o'clock now. You can't possibly... Well, we could make it if you'd help out. Look, do you think you could sort of, well, commandeer an ambulance? An ambulance? Are you... It'd get us through the traffic, yes. Doctor, this is important. I, I think it'll save Cooper's life. An ambulance, huh? Yes. Well, that's what they're for. Stay where you are, Jimmy. I'll be there in five minutes. Can you get a driver? Driver? I'll drive it myself. Four minutes to nine. Phew, I hope we can find him. I'll wait here. You two go ahead. And good luck. Thanks. I'm with you, Jimmy. Where in tarnation? Flight 37 to Chicago, Salt Lake, Reno, San Francisco. Passengers will please board at gate 5. 37, that must be her flight. Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Isn't that her walking up the ramp Where? There? Where? In the brown suit. Oh, that's her. Come on. Oh, Miss Cooper. Mrs. Cooper. We almost missed you. Uh, why, Dr. Kildare. Dr. Gillespie. So we got to talk to you. Well, I'm sorry, but I haven't time. My plane is just about to uh, You must listen to us. I can't, I tell you. Mrs. Cooper, when your husband received your divorce papers today, he tried to commit suicide. Uh, oh, David. Oh, no. He seriously needs someone. Now, we are here to ask you to come back and help him. Oh, I, I want to, but, but David doesn't need me. 
There's someone else. I know. You mean Elaine Dobson, but you're wrong about that. Oh, Dr. Kildare, you just don't know anything about it. Oh, yes, I do. Now. And Mrs. Dobson's waiting outside to talk to you, if you don't believe me. She's here? She came here to see me? Yes, just to tell you how much your husband does need you. Well, will you come with me? Will you come talk to her, Mrs. Cooper? Jimmy, we've been sitting in this ambulance for two hours now, so I'm getting stiff. How long can two women spend over a cup of coffee? Long enough to get a lot of things straightened out, I hope. Well, I hope so, too. Uh, I didn't agree with you on your method of handling this case, but I... Oh, uh, someone's coming out of the lunchroom. It's Mrs. Cooper. I got my fingers crossed. I'm sorry we took so much time. We had a great many things to discuss. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Mrs. Dobson, well, that is Elaine, took a taxi back to town. Huh. She said she'd call you later. I see. And you? Do you uh, want to wait for the next plane or go back to town? I'd like to go back to the hospital with you, Doctor. I'd like to see my husband. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Cooper? Doctor, David said that he'd like to talk to you for a moment. Oh, all right. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, none of that, no, none of that. Oh, I've been so wrong about so many things. Oh, well, everybody makes mistakes, you know. <laughs> Misunderstanding seems to be the keynote in this day and age. All these years, I... I've been thinking that David was interested in other women. That he didn't love me. It's funny, isn't it? It took another woman to tell me the truth. And you know how much he really needs you. And how much you need him. Yes, Doctor. Thanks to you. And Dr. Kildare and Danny Lane Dobson. And you told him that just now? Yes. Poor Nothing to cry about. Well, Mrs. Cooper, I have some good news for you. And for you too, Dr. Gillespie. Huh. Our patient wants Dr. Sinclair to start surgery as soon as possible. Oh, thank heaven. Thank heaven. You see, there's nothing to cry about now. Uh, wouldn't that be your opinion, Doctor? Exactly my opinion, Doctor. Yeah. Exactly. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. No, Dr. Carew. Uh, yes, Dr. Carew. I know you're the head of this hospital. Yes. Well, I'll tell him as soon as he comes in. Dr. Gillespie, you're going to have to talk with him sometime. Well, I don't want to talk to him now. Just keep on telling him I'm out. What's all this business about you stealing an Andy? Uh, all right, all right. You got yourself in trouble. You won't even tell me about it. I give up. I won't even try to help you. Ah, uh, you never helped me in your life. Oh. Screw. I'm out. Dr. Gillespie, don't you dare hide under that desk. Anybody home? Oh, Dr. Kildare, he's home, yes. Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, come on in, come in. Quickly shut the door. He's gone insane, Dr. Kildare. Absolutely off his noodle. Ah, go on with you. I'm just wary of traitors who work on the inside. Jimmy Carew's all fired up about this ambulance. Well, I guess I'm guilty along with him. You, Dr. Kildare. It was in line of duty. Uh, I'll swear to it on a stack of lab reports. And in this case, it saved a man's life. 
Just the same as if we'd picked him up on an accident emergency call. All right. I'll cover for you. Uh, Dr. Carew calls again. I'll slip him an alibi. Well, now, Parker, that's nice of you. And in view of circumstances, you can forget that I fired you this morning. You wouldn't dare fire me. Mm -hmm. I know too much. Well, maybe you're right at that. Dr. Kildare, how would you like a little golf this afternoon? Why, I'd be delighted, Dr. G. Uh, So would I. Now that we've got that one out of our systems, let's get to work on the next case. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by E. Jack Newman and John Michael Hayes and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Georgia Ellis, Larry Dobkin, Yvonne Patey, and Isabel Jewell. Dick Joy speaking.